Hello and welcome to part two of our UI kit series. Now in this part we're going to tackle the styling and where we left off is we had our styling looking like this. So we had our button component with the red dash border and we had our CSS class name using just a normal class name that can be used globally or what if we don't want to use global class names? What if we want to truly scope our styling just to the component and leave all the global stuff for this style sheet here, the global SAS file with all the imports. Well, to do that, all we need to do is just turn on CSS modules. Now in this boilerplate config, I've uh, introduced the options into CSS loader so you can use modules. All you need to do is go into the rules.js in Webpack, um, which basically controls the Webpack configuration for Storybook and change this to true. Um, and that's within CSS loader and we're just switching the modules on. And then all we need to do is go back to the button and we have here import.button.sass. If we change that to which is the SAS file and we change this to and if we restart storybook whilst that's going let's just change this color to blue and then if we look at storybook we can see that it's now got a blue border and if we decided we wanted to add another color, we can definitely find that CSS modules is working. So if we change that to buttons, for example, uh, we don't need to change anything here. That's all fine. Uh, and all we need to do is go to the button.sass and add an S there and change that to orange just to see that it changed. And there you go. We can see that uh, the text now has changed. So CSS modules is working perfectly in Storybook. Now I say Storybook, it's not working in the React project itself. Now, because there is a separate config for Webpack, there is also a separate config for React. And all we need to do is go all the way down to the bottom in the root directory, open webpack.config.js. And in the same vein, find CSS loader and change that to true and now CSS modules is working in the React application as well. Now for this project, we will be using CSS modules, but if you decide you don't want to use it, simply switch it off. You don't, you don't need to use it. It's just a good practice to get into to scope your styling to the actual components. And if we're creating a UI kit, what we don't want to be doing is polluting whatever environment that UI kit is going to be imported into with our own styling. We want to keep that styling separate, which is one of the issues that uh, uh, CSS frameworks have, which is they can pollute the global uh, namespace for class names. But you don't really need to focus on that for now. All you need to know is that if you want to use CSS modules, you can. If you want to decide you just want to use normal classes, you can as well. So let's switch that back, change that back to button, go back to buttons. Right, there we go. Let's close all these down. So as well as CSS modules, the next thing we want to do for our UI kit is go and take a look at the mixins. Now mixins can be very useful and, and can help speed up work on your project. Um, I've put a few important ones here that I tend to use. You can obviously uh, add them as you go, but within the SAS folder, if you go to mixins, uh, the first one we can see is media queries. So essentially, if you just add include and put media query, and then we say we want it as min. And if we set it as min, that's going to say we want it as a minimum width. And then we choose the breakpoint and we'll say palm start. And if we choose palm start, that'll be 420 pixels at a minimum. So it's one way to basically start writing media queries and then you could put your color in here 
um, or whatever. And it's just a really quick way for me personally to get media queries up. You can always just do it the traditional way if you want. But as you can see, it's just a lot more typing involved. Whereas you just really need to put the shorthand for media query, put min, put 420, and then you can start blazing. Right, so here's a good one uh, for font size. Basically, it helps give you a good contrast between your base font and whichever font you're choosing. So nothing is relatively too large um, or out of whack. You don't get these weird font sizes, so it always keeps it based. And you, you have the base as the whatever you set this to. So now the next one is styling for pseudo selectors. So if you ever do, do a before or after, there's always a few things you have to add. If you've ever done it, you know that you need to add the content. Normally people leave it blank, but you have the option of putting something in it. Uh, you choose the position, whatever that is, relative or absolute. Um, and then you choose the display, whether it's block and it sorts that all out for you. Um, so when you call this sudo, it should look like this. So you include sudo um, and you can add more to it and you can do it in an after class. But let's say for example, um, we do this here and then we'll say, let's add, and we'll say, let's add sudo. And then we want it to be block. And we'll say absolute. And yeah, we want it to be that. And, and then very quickly, you've just done three lines of code in just a little bit of effort and you avoid having to repeat yourself. So it can be pretty handy. We don't need this example. Um, another really cool one is animation. Uh, another really cool one is this one for hardware acceleration. Now, sometimes you get animations that are a bit flickery um, and a bit juttery. So what you can do is you can just basically kick in this mix in for accelerating the hardware. It's always a, it's a good one in a pinch. Uh, font styles, similar to sudo, it just adds a lot of styling for you. So for example, if you, know, if you wanna set a particular font styling, uh, you can do with all these properties. So it sorts out the size for you, the color, uh, the font weight, and the line height very quickly. So yeah, I mean, that doesn't really need much explaining. Placeholder text. So usually when you write placeholder text, you have to put in polyfills. And if you haven't got any modules that are automating this for you, so you basically just put in your placeholder styling using this mixing, and this will just do it for all these uh, polyfills as well. So yeah, th those are some of the mixings you can use. And I would advise that you do have uh, a base set of mixings in your UI kit. Uh, that you would probably regularly use. I wouldn't add ones that you, you aren't likely to use or that isn't right for the project. Um, but ones that are, certainly add them in. Now let's have a look at variables. So in the variables file, which you can find here in the SAS folder, uh, I've split it up into several different sections and we'll start with theme colors. Now theme colors are very important to a UI kit or to um, a design system. Essentially, what you want is a primary, secondary, or tertiary color. Uh, I've just gone up to secondary. Uh, you can go up a few more if you want. You can do uh, light versions of primary or darker versions of secondary. Uh, because you're using um, SAS, you, you probably don't even need to do that. You could just use uh, um, like SAS functions like darken or something and just put color primary and then say you want to darken it by 10% you could do something like that um, for like color you've got the body color so this will be the body of the text or something like that um, you can also put in background colors and things like that or nav bar colors you know things that are part of the theme that are separate from these two colors here you can choose uh, you know like a heading color for example, which might be a different color to the body color. I don't know. It depends on, on your project, on your theme, on your UI kit, uh, whatever is right for you. Uh, this is kind of the, the setup to do it. Uh, other colors, uh, you, you know, that's a pretty vague definition of what you can put here, but basically just other colors. Uh, now spacing. Now in every app project, you do have a base set of spacing. So what you determine, um, is a general average amount of space 
uh, it normally goes up uh, like this. So you do you you usually start with eight pixels or ten pixels. That's usually the average definition of what space is. So normally in the design world, you space everything in eight pixels or ten pixels. So I've done it in ten pixels, but you might decide you want to do it in eight pixels. So that's how spacing works in these types of apps. Uh, you can set it up however you want, but that's kind of a baseline to start with. Uh, the next point is breakpoints on the site itself. Uh, we've got just a few default ones in here. So you want, you've got the mobile view, the tablet view, uh, kind of the laptop view where laptop ends and desktop starts. And then you've got sort of wide monitors. But nowadays you've, you've got um, much larger monitors. So you might want to do something like this. 1600 pixels is a common one that pops up now quite a bit. You can decide at what level you're going to support so you can decide at what point you start supporting smaller resolutions or, and at what point you stop supporting larger resolutions so you could say oh i actually uh want to support 320 pixels so you could say from this point on uh this will be a breakpoint or another really common one would be 375 or 374 um, so that could also be a good uh, point to start supporting so it's up to you it depends on the project it depends on your UI it depends on how you want to build it but obviously I would sort this out first and I'd aim to build mobile first so you want to get this sorted very um, very early on and then you can decide on the rest later I feel like this is uh, less important than this um, you could also define a maximum page width so you could say that the page never gets larger than this so that's why I always have a page width as well fonts you can choose uh, a base font size um, you could say I want uh, the font weight to be normal now you can also add a separate font style sheet and include this in um, but just for the argument of this uh, we'll uh, add this in now just to show you what it's like adding in another one so if we go to here and we click a uh, new font and we click fonts.sass and we go to global and we'll add fonts.sass so that should connect us now to here and if we go back to variables and we just grab all of this pop this in here um, so we've got our base line height um, we've got the font weight set to normal. Uh, what we do want is the actual font family in here. So we'll say uh, base font family and we'll just say Arial for now. Uh, we're going to go set the font now. So a font that I like to use quite a bit, um, which is probably a little out of fashion now, is Open Sans. There's a few other fonts that have kind of taken over its space like Roboto or Montserrat um, but just for this uh, demo purposes for all time's sake I'm just gonna uh, include this so if you go to Google fonts we're going to include this font into the project now you can download it and include it as a font face in your project but for simplicity we'll just uh, add it via an import so if we select all of these you don't need to select all of these uh, obviously select the right font weights for your needs um, so once we've added all these, ah, see we need to refresh the page. Uh, we'll go to import and we'll simply just take all of that, go up here and then just grab this. So it's going to use sans serif as the fallback. And we just replace that there. And now we have base font family set to open sans. Now you can set it to base font family. I tend to just do this. So I know that that's what it is. Or you could say base font. We'll stick to base font family as that's in line with this. So if we grab that and if we then go back to storybook, we can see that base font size is no longer appearing because we've taken it out of the config uh, we've taken it out of the variables file so we need to reintroduce that back into the project so storybook can read it 
So we would need to go to rules.js. And if you can see SAS loader, this is telling us what global SAS files that we want. And we just need to add fonts.sass back. Now you won't need to do this uh, more than a handful of times in your UI kit lifecycle. Uh, the amount of SAS files, global SAS files is really small that you'll need. Um, you might not even you might not even need to add any any more than the ones you've got here. Uh, we'll go back to webpack config. Um, we won't need to add it there. So now we've got that all set up. If we go back to Storybook and if we refresh that, it says that it doesn't have base font size. So as you can see, we're still getting uh, an error with our Storybook. So what we'll need to do is just restart our webpack config. Um, by restarting Storybook, and it should be able to read it. So open up the terminal, cancel that, and run Storybook again. And there you go, it's working. Uh, so let's close that down, go back here, refresh that, and we've got everything working again. So that's how you introduce fonts into UIKit. Um, like I said, you can always download it, create a fonts folder, and import it um, via a font face. So we've set up our variables, or we've set up our fonts. We've also set up our mixins. We've added CSS modules um, via CSS loader, and that's pretty much us. So this is the basics of setting up your styling for your project. With these tools, you're now able to start building lots of components and start layering it all together and making um, a very powerful UI kit. In the next video, we'll be looking over how to create an icon library for your UI kit. So if you found the video useful, please do like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video on setting up your icon library for your UI kit. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.